What's up guys? Welcome to Newswave. It's Friday, so I'm pretty excited about Friday because of course you have the whole weekend to look forward to and play games and everything, so it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm also excited because we have uh, Spawncast coming up Saturday night at 9. I'm very excited about that too. So with that guys, let's get started. Now I know what you guys want me to talk about right now, which, <laughs> which are the Switch sales. I will talk about that soon. Don't worry, there was some other stuff I kind of wanted to get into very quickly, including the new T 2DS XL. I did a whole video about this last night, so go check that video up, video out. I'll put it in the card up here. Where we just go over it, it's a new system coming out, technically new, it's kind of a sidestep from the 3DS XL, the new 3DS XL, with Amiibo support, the ZR, ZL triggers and everything, so that's all still there. They're also adding the C-Stick and two screen clamshell design instead of the normal 2DS, just no clamshell design. But of course, the 3D is out, the price is down to 149.9. It's not out to July 28th, that's a little while away. Many people like myself were curious why this is happening, but realistically, it's kind of on the lower side price-wise. It must be there for the younger audience that want a Switch, but the parents don't want to get them a Switch because there's a lot of risk with a $300 portable to give your child. So instead of doing that, get them a new 2DS XL, if they're like seven or eight, and let them play a bunch of Nintendo's games on the go that way. I think that's a good choice there. I would have brought this out closer to the holidays probably, but realistically, it's gonna sell probably, I mean, it looks like a new 3DS XL, so yeah, it'll probably sell going forward. I'm interested in one. I think it looks better than any of the other handhelds right now with that nice kind of carbon fiber-esque look and the blue outline. It looks cool. I'll probably pick it up July 28th and we could check it out. Maybe I'll even open it up, but let me know what you guys think about this. This is interesting. And there's some awesome news. I mean, awesome news from Bandai Namco. Now, a lot of the times games only come out in Japan and we here in the West have to pretty much gamble and try to figure out if we can import it and if we can get it to work and is there are there English subtitles and all this stuff. And then we kind of complain that it's not here and then we kind of <laughs> move along sad. It looks like Bandai Namco actually heard us, and they're bringing over a very cool game to the West in Gundam Versus. Now, you guys might not know this, I don't talk about it a lot, but I'm a pretty big Gundam fan. I was a really big fan of Gundam Wing back in the day with anime. I really liked, like, Gundam Battle Assault on the PS1, even though it wasn't the best game. I still enjoyed it. I liked Gundam, Gundam Wing Endless Duel on the Super Nintendo. I actually went out of my way to make a repro for myself to play it. And it was awesome. It was such a good time. I, I think I even made cover art for it. It's around here somewhere. It's a loose Super Nintendo game that I made. And I could probably even show you guys how to do it, it, it really, I guess. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's awesome to see this come over. Again, this is just something that I guess Bandai Namco is kind of helping out fans with. Because I don't think it's going to sell particularly well compared to mainstream games. But if they're already bringing it out like they have in Japan, why not move it over, get it translated to English, and just let us enjoy something like this. It's an awesome game. You'll see some of the trailer here. Very cool looking. I'm a big Gundam fan. I will pick this up. They said they have 90, yes, 90 mobile suits spanning 35 years of Gundam. So this is going to be cool. I'm going to enjoy this. I will get it. No release date yet. They just say sometime this fall. And it's only going to be on the PlayStation 4 as far as I can tell right now. But again, it's fine. I'm happy they're just bringing it over in the first place. Let me get it on my PS4 Pro. That probably won't be a Pro patch though, but I'll get it on the PS4. It'll be fun. That's out this fall. That's Gundam Versus. Then we got a little more from Nintendo about their E3 presentation, and it looks like they're going to stick to their typical Treehouse and Nintendo Direct format. They will not have any kind of live presentation, which if you're kind of, I guess, older like me and enjoyed the older E3 presentations, a little bit of a disappointment, but I do understand the Directs are a little more controlled. They're a little easier to push along. There's not a lot of waiting for audiences to clap and then calm down and all this stuff. It's a lot more streamlined, but I still like, you know, the old days where people would cheer when Mario and Metroid were on screen because we're getting into announcement before it or Smash Bros. I don't know. I, I think I kind of missed the crowd reactions from way back in the day. As far as I can tell, this was during their presentation to investors. You'll see it right here. It says, finally, the video game trade show E3 will be held in Los Angeles this June. Again, this year, we will not be hosting a large scale press conference for institutional investors, analysts, and the media. Nintendo of America will present further information on our plans at a later date. So yeah, no no big stage presentation for the crowds or anything. Um, I, it's just, you know, it's their decision, that's fine. As long as they bring us the announcements that I think most of us want, I'm okay with this. And really, other third parties are gonna have their own live ones as well. So maybe we see some stuff from Square at Square's press conference or, or Ubisoft or any of these other guys. So we'll see. Um, I just missed the old days where Miyamoto comes out with a sword and a shield during the Twilight Princess announcement. People are freaking out, but... You know what? It, it's 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 the future now, I guess. <laughs> That's the way it is. And here we go, guys. This is the big news of the day. Obviously, Nintendo's fiscal earnings for this or past fiscal year earnings have been announced, released, however you want to say it, to investors. And the Switch, 
<laughs> it did well. It did better than I and many others thought it was, go it was going to do. And uh, good for Nintendo. Let's get in the numbers real quick. So the big number, I guess, that everyone wants to know is how many Switch units shipped. The, again, guys, these are shipped numbers. These are not sold through. Although, how fast the Switch is selling is pretty much an indicator that most of these have probably sold by now. I also want to point out that you're going to see a number, but there's a good chance because this is up till the end of March. Some of these may have shipped uh, March or yeah, March 28th, 29th, and maybe didn't make it to the store until April 2nd or third so keep that in mind too this may not mean all these sold in march it just means they're out there first number we see is nintendo switch units shipped 2.74 million in march that is amazing mostly because that means that they were able to ramp up production like they said they promised us 2 million units they gave us 2.76 million units um, much more than they initially promised. I guess the, them saying that they were ramping up production was correct. Again, if people can stop sending me emails telling me that Nintendo is constricting supply flow and understanding that they're a business, like I tried to explain in my, one of my, actually one of my original videos, and I think about it, I was over on the wall with the Nintendo and the PlayStation Xbox signs where I was telling you guys that Nintendo's a business. They're not here to constrict supply flow because they have investors to answer to like this. They have to tell them that they are shipping units and selling them. So no, Nintendo is not here to keep switches from you. Reggie's not laughing in an office with a fort of switches next to him. They're out there at 2.74, much higher than what they originally thought with 2 million. So good for Nintendo, um, good for gaming in general, because again, this is, this is heavy competition now. This isn't like, oh, Nintendo is putting systems out. Oh, that's fun. Yay, Nintendo. They are a legitimate force right now um, because if they make it through, say, April and they get to 4 million, 4.2 million, that is as many PS4s sold through in Christmas, during Christmas. Because at the end of December, which would have been their month and a half, they had 4.2 million systems sold. Xbox One had 3 million. Do you think the Switch will make 3 million units? halfway through April. They're probably already there. They have already probably got there halfway through April. Right now, they could be coming up on 4 million because again, Mario Kart is out now. And realistically, Nintendo's in a great place. Now, the big question now is going to be how well can they drive this going forward? Can they keep the momentum? Uh, E3 is at a great time for them because they're going to make a ton of announcements at E3, but they have a great, great system going here. I think the Switch works much better than the Wii U. I don't think that's even a question. Marketing's better. Uh, the message is out to consumers. They want the item. Zelda launches with it. Probably the one of the best Zeldas ever at this point. One of the, obviously the best, probably one of the best games this year, right? So realistically, the Switch is in a good position. We'll see going forward. That third month is still critical. As much as people want to tell me it's not, it is. That's when the Wii U started dropping. So May will be interesting. Mario Kart, though, the 28th, it's out now. And we also see Zelda Breath of the Wild sells an insane amount in March. 3.84 million units. My gosh, that is a lot of Zeldas sold through. That's insane. Um, as far as I can tell, the, the Switch units, this is all just reading in the actual paperwork the Switch units were shipped units. How many, that's what they're reporting. The software, though, is sold through. So these are amounts that have sold. And they show, again, 3.84 million Zeldas. And it says 1.08 of that is on the Wii U, whereas 2.76 is on the Switch. NPD was correct. <laughs> Zelda outsold the system it was released for. So a lot of people bought Zelda without having the system. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that isn't, I, I, I've never seen that before. Like most others, I kind of thought NPD was incorrect but they were not i have to start looking at mpd a little more seriously now because they are very close they predicted as far as i can tell with super data's help 2.4 million units sold which for the switch with might be correct because again 2.76 are shipped so there's a good chance that uh 2.4 million may have been sold and then they have extras that are shipped obviously and man that is insane. Also goes on to show that Pokemon Sun and Moon still very strong. 15.44 million sold, which is a ton of units. They also gave us their, our forecast going forward. And this is going to be up to March 2018. They want to do 10 million more switches. This is from April 17th to March 18th again. So they want to sell 10 more switches. They want to be in the neighborhood of 13 million switches in their first year overall, which is amazing actually that's that's insane that that would put it right where the wii u did lifetime like we've been talking about guys where they want to do that and the reason i think this is set lower because i think they will get to 10 million easily um i think they're doing this lower so that they can say that they exceeded 
exceeded expectations. You always want to go to your investors saying you did better than what you originally predicted. You don't want to go to them and say, we have to lower our expectations, guys, not selling well. You want to go there and say, guys, we, we're, we're blowing it up. We're, <laughs> you might want to put that up to 13 million because we're killing it. So that makes sense. I think they will get to 10 million easily in this next fiscal year. I think they will get to somewhere around 12 million. So they would probably be very close to say 15 million units sold through, I believe by the end of next fiscal year, which would put them uh, March, at uh, the end of March, 2018 then. I think analysts are pretty much thinking the same way I am as well, because they have mostly uh, pretty much upgraded their expectations for the Switch going forward. This is from our good friend, <laughs> Takashi Machizuki, our good buddy the 1440p guy. <laughs> I'll never let him forget that. He told us that the Switch screen would be 1440p. If you did not see my old video, go check it out. Um, <laughs> so he, he did come out and say that this is from analysts and everything over there. He is part of the Wall Street Journal in Japan. And he said, McQuarrie ups its Switch sales view from 11 million to 14.5 million in fiscal year 318. Software attach rate to 2.8 times from 1.8 times. Expects Dragon Quest 11, March, April, somewhere in there, Monster Hunter 5, February, or March. Again, not surprised. I, I, I actually kind of agree with that expectation. Somewhere, they're, they're looking for 14, like I said, to 14.5 million. I think that's good. I thought 2.4 million was too high in March. I was wrong. I thought it was closer to 2 million. So sure, 14.5 million, why not? And the CEO of Nintendo also came out during the investors briefing that they gave where they gave all of these numbers and everything. But he also had to let us know a couple extra things, including Nintendo's a bunch of unannounced games, guys, that are going to blow the sales charts out of the water. I think most of us know that by now, but he has to kind of explain this to uh, older investors, gentlemen who don't understand the video game world necessarily. They just understand numbers and building anticipation for a product, not necessarily a video game. During the entire briefing, he is pretty much harping on the fact that unannounced third-party games are coming, and then there's a bunch of unannounced first-party games coming, which I think we all pretty much know games are coming. E3 is like over there. It's like right around the corner now. So a lot of these announcements are going to be held off. I'm surprised the new 3DS or new 2DS XL, for example, got announced. That seems like an E3 announcement, but why not? Um, this tells me that if they do have a full E3 schedule, if they're willing to announce that now, that it's not coming out to July 28th, they could have held it off, like I said. They must have a lot of stuff at E3 to show. Their floor space shows that. It's going to be, I think, a very interesting show. Um, but which third parties show up? That is the big question. We keep hearing rumor, murmurs of Resident Evil, Assassin's Creed, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. And the first parties, obviously, Metroid is a big one, Smash Bros. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. And I think they get it. I think Nintendo understands that the Wii U had so many issues because there were just, there was, there were months six, seven months where a game would not come out that was worth its salt. And now we have a game every month, more. I mean, I just downloaded Kamiko and I've actually been playing that for about four hours and it was a $5 game that just randomly shows up. So there are games coming out. Mario Kart is out now, for example, and that's going to keep me busy for a little while. I would like, now to be fair, I would like a game every other week, but I, I understand it's still new and third parties have not jumped on yet, but when that happens, which it will, because these sales are too hard to ignore, especially if it passes the Xbox One, which at this rate, it might sooner than you think, um, it's going to be impossible for third parties not to put their stuff on there and figure it out. So good for Nintendo. They have it figured out. They learned from the Wii U. The Wii U was a mistake that was necessary for Nintendo to learn, and they learn now. So good for them. I'm very, very excited to see where the Switch goes from here. And you know what? This is good for everyone in games, because now Sony and Microsoft have taken notice of the Switch, and they're not going to rest on it. They're not going to say, oh, look at Nintendo. Good for them. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let them take over the gaming world. Great. No, 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 no. Sony is going to bring it E3. Uh, Microsoft's going to show up with a new system, and I hope new IPs. And of course, Nintendo's going to show up with a bunch of stuff too. So this makes me feel like gaming is back. We, we missed out on an entire system last generation, obviously, where really the Wii U did not make a big splash and did much. So great. Good for Nintendo. I'm excited. I can't wait till E3. I just want to see what's going to happen. That's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know if you think about anything we talked about today, whether it is the Nintendo Switch sales, which I'm sure everyone wants to comment about down there because it was a big win for Nintendo. Again, big win for games in general at this point because it also shows that 
people maybe still like game consoles, despite some analysts saying that game consoles are dead. Uh, <clears throat> Michael Pactor. <laughs> and uh, uh, let me know you guys think, of course, about the unannounced games. I'm sure everybody has a theory at this point and a guess. And I'm curious about your thoughts on the 2DS XL or Gundam Versus. Yeah, that, that'll be cool. That's it for now, guys. Have a good weekend this weekend. Get out and play some games and definitely come by Saturday night at 9 p.m. for the Spawncast with Shane from ReRes TV. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And man, there's a lot of stuff this week to talk about. That's going to end up being like a two-hour podcast. There's just, there's so much stuff to talk about. That's it for now, guys. I will see you next time.